What's up, freaks? Welcome to the Russian and the Freak Show. I don't know why you people are standing up. There's chairs here. Free. Why are we standing up? This is. It's like you can't. The chair is there for a reason. Like ready. The Russian and the Freak Show, episode number three. This is a live show on the Facebooks, the Instagrams, all that stuff. The Russian and the Freak is a show about how to maintain your equilibrium and function in this dysfunctional world as a freak family in business and life so you can transform the chaotic complexity into your own special normalcy that's what this is about little freak shows here put together a little sign for this show just for today there you go all kinds of craziness on there i don't even what does it say on there read some what it says on there Mm. all the details no excuses no one can hear you what what louder louder no excuses. No excuses again. No excuses again. And no. Excuses. It says crazy chaos. chaos. What is that? Daruckus. Daruckus. Bring in Daruckus. That means crazy. Bring in Daruckus. What else? You are flipping awesome. Stay positive, and never really quit. Positive. The Russian and the freak. So I guess this is the official show uh, title <laughs> banner for the Russian and the freak. I don't know what that green stuff is that happens on these phones sometimes. That's annoying. Anyway, we're gonna get rolling with this. So this is episode number three. Today, this episode is about money. It's the three M's. Well, really, maybe four. It's going to end up being four or five. Money, <laughs> marriage, mayhem, and mother... Fu- Don't say it. Mother flipping madness and connecting all of those together. Because let me tell you, this is something that we deal with on a regular basis. Not just in our personal lives, but in our business, especially the project. You see, I have the project shirt here on is I talk to men on a daily basis in the project about their money and it always ties into their marriage and their wife and the mayhem and the craziness. We're going to go into all the details here and talk about it on a deep level. And let me tell you this, if you if you don't have thick skin or if you take things personal, just fucking turn this off right now. Don't say that. Turn this off right now and don't even watch the rest. But the thing is, if you think you need to turn this off, you probably need to stay tuned because it's probably some shit you need to hear. And I, I can say that because I deal with, I'll talk, I talk to anywhere from 20 to, to 30 men on a regular basis, daily basis. And this is just information that I'm just getting, setting back to you to help you out in your own money and marriage and freaking mayhem. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Yes. Uh, welcome to the show again. And uh, I would like for all of you to interact with us. And what I mean by interacting, not to be afraid of posting, making comments on Facebook, on Instagram, because a lot of times uh, when we do the lives and when I do the lives, a lot of times you probably realize from this, so you, sometimes you are afraid of posting something or making comment because you are afraid mm-hmm. of being judged or you are afraid of what other people say or you are afraid that you're not going to get it right. But guys, we are obviously social media are crazy but just put it what you can put it what your heart tells you what is your experience that is telling you exactly what you should be doing so my question huh? for you would be what we're gonna talk put about put it what you can put it we're gonna <laughs> put it what you can put it don't forget that very we're gonna, we're gonna <clears throat> do you know do you know i just realized and this happened the other day during a boxing class I have. I didn't even think. I have certain clothes that I wear around the house, but I would never wear out in public. And these pair of pants I have on happens to be one of them. And I, I the other day we teach teach a boxing class early in the morning, and it's a little cold here in Southern California out, out in the in the home gym. So I had sweatpants on for the warm up part, and I realized I turned around on the live video and realized I'll see if I could show you. Uh, you Insta- stick your Instagram can in. see. I'm gonna have to stand up for Facebook. Let's stand up on the keys. Tell me when you can see my ass on Facebook. Let me tell you one thing. If you could see that, we call these the booty pants because <laughs> this was a, a Christmas gift that I got from the Russian over here a few years ago. It's a pair of sweatpants <laughs> with uh, the logo of our fitness business right on the ass crack. So <laughs> as I'm walking around and my butt cheeks are jiggling with each step. <laughs> Someone's head can just watch our logo because that's what, you know, I'm the type, I'm definitely that type of guy that would wear, you know, a, a tramp stamp on my ass while I'm walking around. But wait, there's more. There's more. We're going to get into the money and the madness and the mayhem. Don't worry. And, and all that. There's more. There, this came with a red, a matching red pair of shorts. Now, these were super 
nut hugger shorts. Like I'm talking about crotch was like. Pamela loves it. Pa, the, the crotch was like bulging. There was like a frog eye in there peeking out from the, these red shorts. But the best part of these shorts is they had my phone number on them in case someone wanted to contact me for personal training. <laughs> the, the only problem is the phone number was right across my crotch. So if, <laughs> if someone wanted to, to, to give me a call for personal training or to join the gym, they would have to look at this, this frog eye, this, this male version of a camel toe, what do they call it, a, a moose knuckle Come that they have. And they would have to look at it, the, the juggling balls to get the phone number to call me for the services. So I, I was walking around with my basically phone number on my crotch on the, with these booty shorts for a while. So this was, this is with the pants I'm wearing today. I thought I would share that with you. Uh, this was a great share uh, moment. Thank you so much. And I'm sure you guys were cracking up. But before we're going to go forward, I just want to tell you that this is actually Steve, uh, Steve amazing ability to take something uh, into a next level and uh, make people laugh. If you don't know, he always picks those things about you, about what you have done and make it fun. So I hope that all of you enjoyed it. By the way, I did some cool, amazing stuff better than this one. Let's move forward. So guys, I will have actually a question for you because this is, lead le this is leading to interaction. Uh, before I'm gonna say our list, I want you to write down and also interact, write it down, type it right here in the comments. What is there? Where does your monthly spending goes to and on what? So before we're going to tell you our list, I want you to write it down. And that's what I was saying. Don't be afraid. Type it in from your heart. What is it? Is it food, bills, whatever, investments? Please, because if you're going to interact with us, we can move forward with the show and it's going to be fun. Now, plus... It's okay not to get it all. It's okay not to be perfect. It's okay to learn from someone else because we probably will learn something from you. Scroll up. I can see exactly all this stuff is in there. All right, so here we go. Uh, <clears throat> this is our list. Obviously, it's food. We all got to eat, right? So the groceries. Number two, bills. Obviously, we have car payments. Yes, we'll have electric. Number three, investments. Now listen to this, the investments goes in few parts. Retirement, real estate, that's one number that, that goes into personal development because investing in yourself, that in, in personal development, it's investment, Jeez. right? So books, courses, coaching, masterminds, signing up, uh, uh, getting a trainer, right? Now, then what else? That's too fast, a little bit slower. Uh, yeah, then, good, then, good, real, real slick. Then we're gonna have, then we're gonna have like project, right? Now think about it. You invest <laughs> in your kids, right? You buy them uh, courses for uh, soccer, um, second language, music lessons. You invest in your kids, so you gotta think about your own personal investment because this gonna lead to money if you're gonna raise your knowledge, you're going to increase your money making, right? So now, num C is health, investment in your own health. That's, that's fitness. That's fitness. We have ABC investments, right? Now, uh, what is, I'm going to tell you an example of Ivanka. Ivanka told me just recently uh, when she was reading a book, she asked us questions all the time, like, what does this word mean? Or Sometimes I don't know what you guys talking about, but I speak English, right? She asked me that question and I say, this leads me to thinking this is personal development. When kids learning, we got to approach that same mindset that we got to learn. We got to ask questions. When you read books, you're not going to know everything right away. Nothing's going to connect immediately, but that's your learning. You got to think and treat yourself like a forever student. And then she also asked me a question like, wait a second, how do I speak another language? How is that, that I understand? Well, it was investment, right? Investing, me speaking to them in another language so they will actually have a better brain development. They will have a better abilities and capabilities in life. So, so guys, obviously a point right here, if you speak a second language, don't be afraid, teach your kids right here. But we gotta move forward. What yes, else is on yes, our li certainly list? Self-care. <laughs> self-care is what I put on the self-care, huh? 
massage, nails, hair, I don't know. Steve gets a free neck rub. When we studying on Friday night, we studying some courses, he's typing and I'm just gonna dig that neck for him so he can feel better and move his head all around like he does. What does this have time. to do with money? Listen, yeah. this is all You've has You've lost a, me. You've lost this me. This all has a me reason. Too. Five, right? number five, entertainment. We talking about where this money is going in your spending. Movies, restaurants, I don't know, shooting. Number six is adventure, trips. Number I don't know. seven, I don't know. it's extra stuff. So home stuff, clothing, sure. whatever you have. And now my question to you is, do you ask permission to do any of this? Please answer yes or no. This above, the list that you have created or the list that I gave you, I don't know what your money is going monthly on spending. <clears throat> so have you, uh, have you, what do you what do you ask what do you ask for who is this person if you said then yes i ask for permission who is this person that you ask for and what do you ask from that list are you asking for the permission who is this person and have you ever asked yourself a question if you ask for permission why on earth i would ask a permission of someone my spouse i don't know accountant can i invest for for instance in my health because that's what the answers we're getting. Steve could tap into this right now. Would you want to add something to it about asking for permission? Well, on that note, we're out of time. So we will see you next week on episode number four because we just told you about your laundry list of shit that we know you have to spend your money on. That was this excellent. That was good stuff. I'm going to tell you the truth about fucking money, okay? Everyone wants money. Everyone needs money. But whenever someone doesn't have money and they see someone else busting their ass to, to make money, they will complain about that person. They'll talk shit about that person. Oh, that you're, you're so lucky. No, it's called 20 years of hard fucking work every day from five in the morning till midnight. That's what it's called. It's called that maybe people are, are too scared to take a risk to elevate their financial status. They're making too many excuses or complaining about their situation or blaming a government or blaming a president or blaming whatever, whatever the hell they're blaming. That, that's the, what the problem is, that the people's thoughts and relationship with money is where the issue is. It's not a problem of spending too much money. It's a problem of go and bust your ass and make more money. Like, take a risk. Because everyone wants it, but then they hate on people who have it and make excuses why they don't have it. But everyone wants it. You need it. You need money. They say money doesn't, money doesn't buy happiness. Okay, that might be true. But I'll tell you what, it, it's a lot better to have money to, to create the experiences you want because money moves your mission. Whatever your mission is, money's gonna move that mission. Whether it's create better experiences for your kids, invest money for the future, to travel, to donate to, to people say, when is it gonna be enough? When are you gonna have enough? When are you gonna stop? When, when, when is be working gonna be enough? When is it making money gonna be enough? It'll never be a fuck enough. You can never have too much because there's always organizations and charities out there you can give to. Like this month, we're gonna be doing a, a charity fundraiser, 24 hours worth of push-ups for the big brothers, big sisters of Orange County, California. We're gonna be doing push-ups for literally 24 hours straight, how many we can get, and donating all the money and profits to the big brothers, big sisters. So you can never have enough. You need to change your whole thought process and relationship when it comes to money and, and stop talking shit about people who have what you want. Instead, sometimes just shut the fuck up and listen and find out what have they done to get there. And even if you're successful and you're already making decent money you can always do more you can always be smarter about that stuff you can always be a better investor you can always be a better leader you can always be a better communicator you can always learn new skills to get to that next level because the skills that got you to the level that you're at are usually not going to be adequate enough to get you to the level that you want to get that you want to get to next yes and of course money is not like giving you a happiness don't think like okay if you have money all the problems will stop existing but it's gonna help you to scale help you to invest like steve said and think of money that's how how we think as a tool to help the world because all of us have some reason some purpose some mission in this world that can help you like we created a peak physique right we have online coaching we helping people to lose the weight we helping them to change their mindset think like all of you peak freaks out there think about it like by scaling and expanding peak we were able to create all these crazy parties sent monthly gifts 
all these donations in the world that we have done. We've done 24 hour autism workout, right? And it was unbelievable. So, so think like this. And also the correlation with money, as Steve mentioned, I think that a lot of you think like I cannot make money or you have that bad correlation that you don't deserve it. So if you think like this, you will never get it because your subconscious mind it's going to convince you that that's what it is. Now, not having a good positive partners in your life, someone that will help you and push you. It's also the reason so many times that people don't have money, because think about it. Like if a, if, if a guy, for instance, Steve would, would say this, needs a project, but then he goes and asks his wife for permission and she says no, she stops him from developing. So going the extra mile, so going above and beyond so he can scale, learn, and then not being able to make the money eventually, right? Now, what else I think you should consider? Accepting the failure through the process because a lot of times you have an idea, you want to make the money, but you failing and instead of continuously going and repeating again and again the trials and errors you just like giving up so give me i will give you an, a, 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 an example of peak it was a very very big struggle in the very beginning for us but we keep on pushing some of you don't know but we started with one client in uh, the first Spring Valley location, but we keep on going, we keep on pushing and developing and scaling. Now think about Edison. Edison had like 10,000 failures before it really created the creation that he spread to the world. So keep that in mind. And and all along the process, let's let's talk about it. Let's bring it into the to the family, to the family side of things. So I sell the project. I, I do the sales of the project. It's a twelve thousand dollar course, right? And on a daily basis, and I have these conversations every single day. There's men who know that they are just failing in certain areas, the areas that they need to improve in. Whether it's become a better husband, become a better father, become a better entrepreneur, better leader, better freaking man, better fucking human. They know they need to do it. They're, they might even be on the phone in tears, like crying about it. Know they need to do something about it. They need some leadership. They need some coaching. They need some guidance. And they'll they'll say, I, I can't do this because my wife will kill me. Or I have to ask the boss. Or I got to run this by the commander in chief. That's what they, that's how they talk about each other in in a, in their marriage. In as They have to go ask for permission for it. And and this is something, it, sure, it's an investment. It's, but we get the same thing when it comes to a $100 thing we might sell or a $200 thing we might sell. So the price is irrelevant. Really, the price is irrelevant. I had one guy who joined the project and he said his wife was just not on board with it. You know what he said? I did it anyway because he knew he needed it. And I said, well, you know, we know what a lot of men tell me is that, oh, if I do this, my wife will leave me. I said, well, that's exactly why the fuck you need to do this. If you're making a, a purchase that you know is, is going to make you be a better part of your family and for the uh, an investment in your own self and personal development and your family, and your wife says, I'll leave you if you do this, that's exactly why the fuck you need to do this. There's some, some serious, serious fucking issues with that relationship. That's the first thing. And then he said, I know that I have a strong enough relationship that I can go and do it. And she's we're not going to get divorced over me going to do something, no matter how much it costs, because they have that type of trust and credibility with each other. And if you don't, that's even double the reason to fucking do it, because you need to learn how to obviously communicate better and have a better trust and better credibility with each other. That's a huge, I mean, I hear it all the time. I have to run it by the boss. And that's not just with the project, but especially with the project. And guys will, will, will say, I know I need this. I really want to do this, but I can't do it. Basically, you can't get permission to do it. Like, how do you need... Let's talk about permission, like about not being able to afford it. And then but even on that note, we, since we use the D word. We use the D word of divorce. You know what? People, people get divorced and I'll speak to men most of the time. They're either about to go through a divorce, they just had a divorce, or they are now divorced for a couple of weeks, months, years. And they're seeing their kids maybe once a week. Some of them once a month, some of them a couple times a year because they've moved away. And then on top of that, well, that's a big enough of a loss of money in the first place, right? That's 
if, if you could think you need to do something, what you're doing is not fucking working, then you need to do something about it. If you need to get permission, something's not working. If someone's going to be pissed off, you have to ask the boss, something's not working. If you're unable to make a decision, sure, you want to communicate about stuff, about certain things. But in general, if, if you're going to go to the store and buy something, you have to ask and get permission or to join a gym or to take a course or to work on some personal development. And you're afraid you're going to get divorced. Let me tell you, that's why you need to do it. That's 100% the reason why you fucking need to do it. And then these guys will say, once they're already divorced, so when they're not divorced, they say, I can't do it because my wife will divorce me. I can't do it, the boss will let me do it. But then, when they're already divorced, they say, I can't do it because I got to run this by my wife's lawyer. They have to get fucking permission from a lawyer from the divorce they had, which they, if they would have done something about it in the first place, they never would have had. So that sounds like a whole more of a fucked up situation to me. And these are what I hear literally on a daily basis. And everyone needs to invest in themselves. You'll invest in your house and your car and you'll sit and water your fucking lawn for hours a day and watch painters paint the side of your fucking house, but not work on yourself. And you just keep getting bigger and bigger and, and out of shape and fatter and fatter and, and worse relationships with your kids. And then say, oh, I don't have time to go hang out my, or bring my kids to, to jujitsu or something. I don't have time to go work out, but you have time for all this stupid other stuff. And that stuff is much more expensive than developing yourself and investing yourself without having to get permission. The reason why you need to get permission is the exact reason why you need to do stuff like this. That's the exact reason. I'm trying to read these comments there for, well, I'll read it while you're, you're uh, going up there. Okay. Okay. So, so yes, perfect. That's why I, we started this whole section today of me asking you the the points in a circle what you have when you're spending the money on because it really sounds a lot of time ridiculous what you can also do is like if you have all these all these points ask yourself a question would i ask permission to go and buy food shopping or do groceries it's like something sounds sometimes so ridiculous but we're gonna move forward so i'm gonna give an example because this is pretty pretty funny what happened years ago when we mm, first started peak in spring valley and two Hasidic women walked in and they offered me something super cool. It was Herbalife. And I was so thrilled and I thought, oh, this is going to be great. This is going to uh, scale our business. This is going to um, add some value because we're going to teach people also how to eat for weight loss. We've never been involved in a chic uh, business. And I remember they told, I said, how much it is? I didn't even listen too much. I just was like, it was that sixth sense in my head sign it this is great i got excited so i go to the office and i ask him it's hundred dollars can we uh, i wanted to sign up and he goes no absolutely not at this point we really did not have the money he's like no so you know what i did i turn around and with a freaking heart going out of my chest i took the credit card and i said here you go it's actually $100. not the way it happened you told me about it after you already signed up for it you told me about it after you signed oh, up it, for it and i would say go get well, a refund go return you told it me that after. do whatever you have to do whatever <clears throat> and it was a hundred it wasn't a hundred bucks i think at the time it was only the first part was only like 60 bucks or something no it was which was, with all the fees which when you think back on it like how fucking stupid 60 bucks and let's fast forward a few a couple years from there we're in the business busting our asses working all day need to grow the business need to hire a coach and I had to decide to hire a coach. It cost $1,800 a month just to hire a business coach. And what I do? I went and hired a business coach for $1,800 a month. While we were damn, you know, doing okay, but needed to grow. Went and told her after I went and did it. That I, I just did this $1,800 a month thing when we have this business that we're busting our asses and struggling. Fast forward a couple years from there. Needed to take that business to the next level once I had that business coaching. Needed some more mentorship. So I, I, had, I hired a business coach for $15,000. $15,000 for a half day of one-on-one -on -one private coaching. And then just a monthly call after that for a year. $15,000. And I told her after I did it. Now, what, was your, what, what did you tell me after, after I told you that I just spent $15,000 fucking thousand dollars on this? I, well, I, I asked you, I said, this is great. We got we to gotta invest in ourselves. This is going to help us. Even though I was a little bit afraid, but we just did it. I did not ask him. I didn't, there was, there's not even a question about asking for permission. We just trust each other with the, with the decisions that we make. And once you have this and you want the other person to grow, 
you should there's not such a thing i'm gonna let you you just go for it because if you don't what's the worst thing can happen money comes and goes you make money you lose money but if you say to someone no you're stopping something that in it they want to do it they want it to develop they want to create this is all about our lives guys so right now i'm speaking to all the ladies out there start being a support of your husband start being a person that it's right there for them and stop going and hovering over them and saying no you can't or the guys will tell you that she is the 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 the, the leader of the house well you know what men should be the leader we discuss stuff together but you need to be the one that will be on support because you strongly believe in your men abilities plus a lot of times because maybe you've been always like no don't do it uh, this is not a good investment you are negative about yourself spread the negativity on him and really you never gave the man a chance to really prove to you that he has good ideas he probably never had a chance to do this so today let's change the mindset give yourself a little bit more room and say you know what i am going from now on i need to let him decide i need to let him make his own decisions and i guarantee you that your marriage will improve that your money will improve that you yourself gonna improve because it's it's in us if we have that stopping mindset if we stop someone else you do this to yourself it's the same thing like with sales it's the same thing so take my uh my idea today i'm telling you you're gonna change and improve and think about it. there there's a back to the project there's an overabundance of money and she just said it. you're gonna spend money you're gonna make more money you're not gonna you go back in time and, and rebuild that relationship that you've ruined with your kids over divorce is always about money and about sex. That's what divorces are about. Look it up. Like there's an overabundance of money and there's an overabundance of hair on your head. If the, if the, someone just wants to grab a hand fistful of your hair and some of it falls out during that time, then it's going to grow back just like the money's going to grow back. So that's stupid fucking reasons that people get divorced. Think about it. That's all it is, is money, sex. That's what they argue about. Just feel whatever. Your hair is going to fall out. It'll grow back. Big deal. You'll live. <laughs> You'll fucking live, all right? And the money's going to come back. So there's an overabundance of money. It's it's un unlimited amounts that you can make. It's all about your perception of it and the effort you want to put in. The Going the extra mile. We just taught the kids about this the other day. Going the extra mile. And it's lonely on the extra mile because it's fucking hard. And people like to choose easy. Choose hard and you will probably be able to have that part of that overabundance of money and possibly hair if that's what your issues are and that shit is much more expensive than developing and, and investing in yourself and let me tell you if you're a man who knows you says he you need he needs a project because this is what we're really what, what really sparked this conversation if you're a man that knows you need the project you need to work on yourself because you're not your marriage isn't doing well or you have a bad relationship with your kids or you had a bad relationship with your parents or you need to be a better leader in your in your business or you need a, a support system of other men around you because you never had that type of camaraderie and you know you need this stuff and then the answer is, oh, I got to go talk to my wife. I'll tell you what happens 100% of the time. They are in the same exact place that they were six months from now because if you have that issue with your wife and you go talk to your wife, of course she's going to be like, no, your dumb ass isn't going to spend $12,000 or $200. Or the, the price is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. It's the attitudes and the relationship you have with each other that's going to cost. It doesn't matter if it's a penny or a fucking $10,000. Now, if you're talking about buying a house or moving, changing locations or something like that, obviously that's some different level of decisions we're talking about. But you need to get the whole family involved when it comes to money. Teaching your kids about money even. Teaching them about the value of money, earning money, how you, you can't just get something for nothing. You have to earn the money. You have to work for it. And I'll tell you this, as a kid, I had zero money growing up. We were dead broke, fucking hungry, wearing old shitty ass clothes. And I had a bad relationship with money. Thought it was hard to come by. Thought success is impossible. Thought it was just never, never could happen. As I started busting my ass and working hard, and now I can give my kids the life that I never had. I can give them whatever they want. But you know what? They're going to earn it. They're going to work hard. 
They're going to learn how to think before they just are, are given. I'm going to, before I just give them what I never had, I'm going to teach them what was never taught to me. That's what I'm going to first do for them. Then I'm also going to manufacture adversity for them. So they can not just be given everything. Every, everyone wants to be entitled these days. Everyone wants something for nothing. They want the government to take care of them. They want someone else to take care of them. They want the rich to take care of them. How about you fucking bust your ass and take care of your damn self? Create your own economy. Create your own weather. You don't like the weather where you're at? Work hard enough you can fucking move. Take a risk. It's hard work. So we did. We're out here. It's 72 degrees. We worked outside with no shirts on. Both of us. You freak. Who's the freak here and who's the Russian? Yes. And <clears throat> with, with talking about the kids, I'm going to give you a, a quick example uh, that Tyson and Ivanka had the schedule going on throughout the week and on the weekend, right? We try to implement the scheduling so they can help us at home. So they have their own responsibility. But uh, when I was very sick two weeks ago, right? I got uh, whatever. Uh, and, uh, and I taught them even in a time that was, I was so sick, I showed them that we're going to the next level. They need to help me right now because I'm a sick. So the, what I taught them in this short amount of time, this is silly, but it really works. The next level, instead of just, for instance, setting up the dishwasher for me, they're going to put all the dishes into the dishwasher, clean everything, put everything, organize everything. A next level. So change whatever the obstacle is or something that it's hard in your life into positive. There is always a way of helping and scaling your kids. Sometimes these situations in our lives, when we feel they are so negative or so bad for us, they can actually create another opportunity. And for me, that's what it was. And that's, I realized that with them, a lot of times it's like when something crazy chaotic happens, we develop another level for them. And you just need to find it within your own family. Everybody obviously have different stories and different uh, situations, but think about this. But again, it comes from that attitude, right? It comes from what I can do to improve my life, their life, what I can do to help them to go to the next level and not being so dependent on us because we create the extra level of us you know, the kids asking us all the time to, uh, to to constantly make something for them or help them with something. Yes, help is good. That's what we want. But not that codependence when they cannot make sometimes decisions on their own or feel like they can do something for you. They want to do something for you too. Remember this. You want to give them the opportunity that they can serve you as well and help you because it creates a next level of compassion, of love, of connection. And back on to the, to the decisions and the money that we're talking about that this show is about. It is. It's all let's, linked let's together. Go back, let's go back. Hold on. Let's let, go back let to just, it. Let me just say one more thing. When Steve was saying that he was raised without the money was very hard. I, I have to tell you, I came, I was born in Poland, right now in Russia. And I was raised in a obviously broken family. No father, a single mother, a grandparents. We were living together. And all the life, my grandparents worked so hard to like support us and help us. And when I was at probably, well, it really started in the early age, but they always would help me like financially. They would always help me. Or for instance, they bought me the first car when I, gra when I, uh, when I actually passed the exams on uh, to be in a university. They were always there, loving, wonderful people that worked so hard and always helping me. And even though uh, I was getting money and it was not absolutely no rich family, just simple family with a lot of love and care, but I never grew up with that mindset of that I am entitled to it and I'm not gonna bust my ass. So what I did, obviously I ended up being in America. There were steps that I had to take and push and, uh, and adopt. But this fact that I was raised like this, it didn't last, last forever. So I also want you to look into your families and your relatives connections. Like the fact that maybe you don't have money or your family did not have money, your parents doesn't mean that you're not going to have. Cut that, cut that weird bond that maybe they put in your head. Work hard and not smart. Think that this is your life and you can create abundance 
It's up to you. And back to what we were talking about, about money and the, the back on track here. <laughs> sure. Back on track here. Let's talk about back to the kids, right? They, the, the kids, we've just recently taught them about credibility, building credibility in the, their chores around the house. Like they don't have to come and ask me even this. And think about this. If even a nine-year-old and a six-year-old, they don't have to come ask me if they could play video games. They don't have to ask me if they could go watch TV. They don't have to ask me if they can go do a, watch a movie, whatever it is. They don't have to ask because they built up the credibility. We have enough of a trust in there. Of course, it's going to be monitored and supervised and all that other stuff. But if they automatically get their workouts done, which they do, they automatically do their schoolwork. The second they're done with school, they do their homework. They go do their own reading on their own, their extra additional smart time on their own. They clean the house. They clean the room. They do the freaking laundry. Like, think about that. They do that stuff automatic. Go do whatever you want. It's up to you. Make your own decisions. And if you can have that type of trust and credibility in a six-year-old, how the fuck could you not have it in your spouse? Like, think about it. That you can't go and make a decision on your own. There's something not firing on all cylinders there. And when it comes back to the project, which is what I keep putting it back to because it's just the ultimate level of this because that's the ultimate level of personal development you could have in the world. When it comes to that, that's exactly why you need it. Like, think about it. You have to ask for fucking permission. There's a difference between communication and having a discussion about something and asking for permission or being talked out of something that you know you fucking need and want. Like we hear it about in the gym all the time. Women who are overweight and you hear it more than I do. They think it might be 50, 60 pounds overweight and their husband won't let them do it. Won't let them join a gym. Well, not even that. I need to ask my accountant for permission. So how does this ridiculously sound? So you're going to let your health, the fact that you might die from diabetes, stroke, like think about it, weekly people have these diseases. You're going to let your life to be put in your accountant's well, life. The accountant is just an excuse. The husband's not an excuse. The husband's not even an excuse anymore. That's beyond an excuse. It's a fucking a foundational problem in their life. It's not even an excuse. Accountant, whatever. This is about money and marriage. Like the accountant's just them coming up, fishing for some bullshit answer because they're afraid or whatever. That is is a pure excuse. But when when they legitimately think they can't go do something because the woman has to go ask her husband to get healthy and lose weight. Like how do you even have to ask permission for that? And then when you do have to ask permission to not fucking get it and then you don't do it. And then you wonder why you're, 10 years from now having to ask permission to your fucking spouse's lawyer to go spend money on something else. It's just a continuous fucking cycle. It it's is. a foundational fucking communication relationship problem. It's not a fucking money problem. It's not an accountant problem. It's not a lawyer problem. It's a fucking relationship communication problem from the beginning. I, shit, I just bought a, we are they far from buy. rich, but I just, <laughs> a fucking computer that's sitting in your room oh. complaining about the little computer that she has that her old granny <laughs> eyes can't see anymore. This so I just <laughs> bought a fucking $3,000 computer for her just what? with this big ass screen so she doesn't have to wear them granny glasses like this and she can make the letters this fucking big so she could see them. I didn't have to go, I didn't have to go talk and, and ask if, can we, can we buy this computer? It's something we need. It's going to help her work better, be more efficient, feel better about the work that she's doing. Go and fucking do it. I went and got a new pickup truck. And listen, we you know you have to work hard for this shit. And that goes back to the very beginning when I said, stop complaining about the people that are doing it. Instead, learn from them and go and fucking do it. I used to do that. Oh, he's so lucky. You have that jealousy in you. Oh, he's so lucky. Oh, I wish, I wish that was me. Stop fucking wishing and fucking make it happen. And you won't have to ask permission. You don't have to be rich to not have to ask permission. You don't have to be rich to have a solid fucking relationship and not have to worry about asking for permission. I'm, I'm fucking 33 years old. I don't have to ask permission to anyone. Hold on. Shut up. Hold on, hold on. How, I, I never met you like this that you would even say that somebody's lucky. So that's interesting. That's some way back time. What was your point there? And Tyson, shut up with that age. I'm 33. <laughs> All right, so I'm 43, but I, I feel like I'm like 21 and I might act like I'm 15 or 13 or nine or some shit, whatever. Doesn't matter. The point is, if, if we can build a, a credibility and a trust and a relationship with a fucking nine-year-old kid and a six-year-old kid, more than nine-year-old, the six-year-old is, we're still working on that one. But Tyson especially, 
and the six-year-old in some areas. Like, he can go right now and play video games, and I won't even say have to have to question it because he's built the credibility. We have that trust and relationship. If you don't have that trust and relationship, and and I don't want to see. I, I guarantee I'll you see. You ain't thirty-three. Crawford, you keep that mouth shut, you old crusty bastard. Crusty bastard. Damn it. But if you have to ask permission, like it's 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 not a money thing. It's a foundational fucking issue that you need to deal with. Like you should not have to do that no matter what the amount is because you know you're not going to make a stupid decision because you have that trust. Now, if you're just making those stupid decisions, that, that's a whole different story. And we all fought. We, we all let it happen. I did it over $100 or six. I swear, I think it was six. The first thing was $60. Oh, so you were fucking lying is what it... It took 15 years to find out that Herbalife was really 100. She told me it was like 55 or $60. This is the first time I've ever heard it was a fucking 100. If I would have known it was 100 and not 55... It really is a it would have been stuck fu- in my head. Maybe. It would have been a fucking bigger... That would have been double the problem. If I was that mad for 50, imagine what I would have done for 100 fucking dollars. Okay, listen, listen, for a second. When they left... The point is I was fucking stupid is what the point was. Like, how think of how dumb I was. I, I know, but let me... 100 just, bucks. Let me just give them... What's the worst that could happen? We lose 100 bucks. You go fucking make it again. You bust your ass, you work harder. Like, what's the worst that could happen? Listen, he freaked out for a second, but I kept quiet. I just did not say anything. Now we know that's bullshit. You keeping quiet? No, no, no. If you look at the notes I'm writing here during this this session, you know exactly what it is. uh, He blown out of proportion for a second, but I just have that inside of me that thought this is gonna be good. And and about you know what? Going against it, it was it was hard, but I said I have to. You know what we did right after this herbalife thing? What happened right after this herbalife thing? We were still pretty broke at the time, just barely started the business. You know what we did? And which I, one of the first things you should do, as broke as you are, if you're not, whatever, hire a housekeeper, hire a cleaner to do that. So you could focus on getting your shit together. You're probably wasting time on doing stupid little things and complaining about it while you're doing it that you should have, shouldn't even be doing. We had a, we've had a, a housekeeper when we were dead broke, three months behind on the fucking rent in the business, in the gym. And we had someone coming and cleaning the freaking house. But you know Why? Because that allowed us to have the time to laser beam focus and dig out of that hole. Put the pieces into place to grow the business, to make more money. That's the way you need to think about money. Is It's growing you, moving you forward. Not it's something you need to latch on to and fucking hoard it all the time. There's enough money out there. Trust me. There is an abundance of money out there. And this just happened recently with the stupid white fucking chair in the house. We have like 8,000 chairs in the house already. Like this is, you're going to get me all started again. We have like 8,000 fucking chairs in the house already. (laughs) Every chair, of every kind of thing you can think of. We have more than enough fucking chairs in the house, right? And we have a thinking corner where we sit and you do your meditation, you do your writing, you do your thinking. One thinking corner works just fine in this house, but all of a sudden we need another thinking corner. Okay, copy that. We got a new thinking corner. We got the little fuzzy white chair and the little footstool and the desk and the lamp and all this shit on another thinking corner. So now we have two of them. Okay, that's uh, like s- several hundred bucks for that. Whatever. Next thing in the mail, <laughs> fucking Amazon, comes another chair. I'm like, what the fuck is this? You just bought your thinking corner chair. Now you need another fucking chair? Oh, this one was nicer. I'm going to return the other one. Opposite way. I'm going to return the other one. It's still in the box. I'm going to return it. All right, whatever. It doesn't make any fucking sense to me, but all right, whatever. You're going to return the other one. I come home the next day. The, re- the chair that was going to get returned, that was $300 fucking dollars, is out of the box. The kids are inside the box as a clubhouse, drawing stuff on it, saying welcome home and all this other stuff, like it's their little clubhouse. So now we have two new chairs. And I was like, what the fuck? You're supposed to re- re- return this thing. And after me just being a little bitch about it for a little while, I'm like, whatever. It's a fucking couple hundred dollars. We'll go figure it out. We'll make some more. Like, what's like, you can make decisions on your own to go buy a fucking chair or 10 fucking chair now you're getting me all pissed off again okay, okay, and we're gonna go backwards that, but we, we have to i just have to say one thing that women will relate to me with this uh you, you are shopping and spending too much money buying shit you don't need yes women will and definitely then, and then you're gonna stop your husband so this is one point but no you, you you like something you buy it and this thing's supposed to come in the mail three days but then you go out to supposed to get one thing but you're gonna go into that store and your eyes are gonna open wide because you're gonna so- see another beautiful chair that looks even better than the one that you just bought i know women sounds like a struggle life. sounds like a it's real struggle, struggle but that's how we are we just rough buy, life rough you know, life the point is back to permission that's like the word you should not need permission you should be an, a, a fucking i don't even know the word adult i guess is the only word i can think of an adult that can make a decision 
even if it's several thousand dollars that you want to go and do. And it should be in all areas of life, especially, especially if it's something that's you're doing to improve yourself and work on your own personal development. There's no other investment in the world you should be doing than working on your personal development. That's what we do. That's all we do is help people work on their personal development, whether what in whatever area it is, whether it's their mindset, their body, their business. When, it, when you're talking about their, their mindset, their personal development, their discipline, their confidence, their accountability, their motivation, or you're talking about in their body, their fitness, strength, conditioning, their nutrition, having more fuel, being more durable, having more endurance to outlast the competition, being built for fucking war, or even on the business side. Who cannot improve their leadership? I consider myself a fairly decent leader, and guess what? I'm a fucking white belt. I'm an amateur, learning every day, and I've been doing this for a long freaking time. Leadership. We're talking about leadership and team development in your business and in, in, in your money. Building a better team. Better being, becoming a better communicator. Having more emotional intelligence, more emotional discipline, having more structure, organization, setting up systems and operations and processes. Who can't benefit from that stuff? If you have to ask permission for any of that stuff, learning more sales and marketing. Think about that. This is what we teach in both one-on-one private coaching, also in the project to an extreme level. This is what we teach. Like You shouldn't need permission to work on your discipline, to be more confident, to have someone hold you accountable for motivation, for your fitness, your health, your fitness, your nutrition. You shouldn't need permission for this stuff. If you do, there's fucking a major hole in your game. There's a major hole in your fucking relationship. Think about it. If you need permission to become a better leader, a better husband, a better father, when you're saying that you're struggling as a husband and a father, you're going to get permission from the person that you're struggling with. Makes no fucking sense. And if you're not struggling with that person, perfect, you shouldn't need permission. Fucking do it. Money is abundant. Money is out there. It's a never-ending amount. The problem is you think that you're only meant for so much, only capable of so much. That's your fucking problem. Then all of a sudden you're, you're, you're worried about it and stressing it and all anxious and overanalyzing shit, wasting time thinking about stuff to overthinking shit. When that time, if you just would have pulled the trigger and when it did what you know you fucking need to do, whether or not you have permission or not, you go and do it. The time that you save on deliberating and going back and forth and all this other stuff, Guess what you could have used that time for? Making more motherfucking money. Amazing. People t- to worry about going, thinking about uh, shopping around or, or doing all the uh, uh, analysis by par- paralysis by analysis about spending money. And sometimes it's literally in a gym membership for a hundred fucking dollars. They'll spend days and weeks and months arguing with their spouse about it to the death, to the divorce. All right, shut the fuck up. Go spend the hundred bucks. Get yourself in better shape. And the time that you were just going to, and energy, you were just going to use on all that bullshit and nonsense, go use it to make some more fucking money. It's so simple. Wasting your time, you're wasting your thoughts, you're wasting your energy. It's fucking stupid. That's exactly the type of coaching we do both in the project and also one-on-one private coaching. The one-on-one private coaching that we do is all about the mind, the body, the business. It's about the brain, the muscles, the freaking money. That's what it's about. It's called OTD coaching. It's operate to dominate. We also have the project, which is a personal development in-person program for men here in California. In the project, it's a a fully immersive 75-hour experience for men where you're getting a chance to live and train and learn with myself, who's a United States Marine and an entrepreneur, with a Navy SEAL, with a SWAT officer, with a martial arts expert, with a, a business empire builder, where you're learning to kill the inner bitch, kill that inner bitch that needs permission for everything in your life, like little baby boy, like it's time to put on your big boy pants and grow the fuck up and make some big boy decisions. That's the way the world needs to be. I've had people tell me they need to go talk to their spouse. They weren't even fucking married. That's what I've had people tell me. Like that excuses just pop out half the time. So that's what the project is all about. That's to become an even better husband, an even better father, an even better entrepreneur, leader, and man. And there's no man that can't it doesn't, can't use a little bit improvement in those areas. And the thing about the project is it's also about camaraderie, about having, being surrounded, having a network of just badass, hungry, successful, motivated, like-minded men that get you and relate to you and can want to operate on the same level as you because that's what's missing with most men these days. They don't have that support system of men. They're surrounded by bullshit ass fucking friends that just want to go out and drink and go, go to the, the titty bar or whatever else and want to just waste their fucking time rather than thinking about leveling up. Their men are just don't have that circle 
of influence around them, those peers that can help them get to that next level. Whatever your level is. I have private coaching clients who are much more successful in money than me, but guess what I help them do? Help them make more fucking money by locking in their discipline and their habits and holding them accountable, not being afraid to call them out on their bullshit, not being afraid to tell them to stop fucking asking permission for shit, stop being that little boy, trapped in that little boy's body, nut up, nut up or shut up, motherfucker, just like zombie land. First rule of zombie land, cardio. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but it's just fucking cool. If you don't watch Zombie Land, you need to go watch it. Go Zombie Land 1 and Zombie Land 2. So that's really the ways that we can help you is with the one on one private coaching, operate to dominate in your mind, body, and business, with the project, which is a personal development program for men, and then also with online, yeah, have your ringer on during this. Excellent. Online fitness and nutrition coaching that we do, and also free. We do free online sessions, training sessions, workouts. All the time, almost every day, there's a free workout, live workout that we're doing all the time just to give back because you know what? We've made a, a lot of money on, on in the fitness industry, so we are just going to give it back and we're gonna, we, do, we do live free stuff all the time. But if you're looking to go to the next level, if you're looking to not be the type of person who has to ask for permission, if you are the type of person who needs to ask permission, you need someone to, to hold you accountable, to lead you, to show you the fucking way because you have some holes in your game. You have some weaknesses in your game. And they need to be exposed. And for men, they're going to get exposed by the project. And, and the, usually, it's men being afraid to be having those things exposed. I think it's going to make them look weak, look like a fucking pussy. They're afraid to have them exposed. And you need them exposed. So you don't have to ask for fucking permission. I can't imagine having to ask her for permission to go buy something for, forget about even a $100 thing, even a $10,000 thing. And we're not fucking rich. It's just I, I know that I trust myself and I know she'll trust me and I'll trust her to go to, well, <laughs> no, you can't be trusted with those fucking chairs. Don't get me started on the fucking chairs. There, in this room right here, there's like seven fucking chairs and this is just my office. Think about that. There's her. chairs all over the fucking house. Just make yourself feel better with Herbalife. With chairs. Just make yourself feel better with chairs. With, forget about these chairs. We'll never forget about we're the chairs. Have, we all, we're going to have so many people sitting now. <laughs> Nobody needs to stand. But anyway, yes, if you need help with any of these areas, contact us, send us a message, send us direct message, and, and, and we will help you. We will help you. If you yourself have any, I'd love to see some comments. I'm sure, I know there's someone here. Instagram doesn't let you see them after it's live. We'll look through them before we sign off. Facebook will check them after. But put your questions, your comments below. Talk about your relationship money. What do you think about this? What do you think I need to ask for permission? Or do you think it's, oh, well, in a marriage, you have to discuss everything. That's fucking bullshit. You don't have to, discuss, it's bullshit. If you have to discuss everything, that's a weak fucking marriage. I'll tell you that. You should be able to discuss anything after the fact. Like, the time that she walked in on me with like a bunch of goats and all kinds of other stuff in this weird situation. It was after the fact. And look, we're still here. We're still fine. So you shouldn't, you should be able to, anything you should be able to talk about after the fact and be fine. You know? Read in between the lines. Huh? So, on that note, let's wrap it up and just remember, there is an abundance of fucking money in the world. So stop wasting your time thinking about what you should do about it when you could spend that time making more of it. Stop bitching and complaining about people who have it and figure out what they're doing so you can have more of it because everyone wants more money. Anyone says they don't, they say, oh, all you do is care about money. Well, yes, I kind of do because I want to create experiences for my kids. So don't forget there's an abundance of money and there's an abundance of hair in the world. So go all in on both so you're not having to get permission. First, you get permission from your spouse, then your goat, then you have to get permission from your spouse's fucking divorce lawyer. So... Grab a fucking fistful of hair, grab a fistful of money, and realize there's an abundance of both in the world. We will talk to you later. Put a question, comment below. Send this message to someone that you know that needs to hear this about money, that has a poor relationship with money. Send this, share them, tag them in it. Put a question, comment down below. We will talk to you later. You are fucking awesome. No excuses. You are fucking awesome. No excuses. <laughs>